Seventh grade open up resources, illustrative mathematics, unit six, lesson 13, reintroducing inequalities. Problem number one, for each inequality, find two values for X that make the inequality true and two values for X that make it false. A, X plus three is greater than 70. Subtract three from both sides of the inequality sign and that leaves you with x is greater than 67. Values for x that would make the inequality true would be anything larger than 67. For example, x could equal 70 or x could equal 80, anything greater than 67. Values for x that would make the inequality false would be any values that are not greater than 67. For example, x could be 65 or x could be one, anything with a value that's not greater than 67. B, x plus three is less than 70. Subtract three from both sides of the inequality sign and you're left with x is less than 67. Values for x that would make this inequality true would be any values that are less than 67. For example, x could be 30 or x could be 10, anything less than 67. Values for x that would make this inequality false would be any values that are not less than 67. For example, x could be 90 or x could be 100. Anything not less than 67 would make this inequality false. C, negative five x is less than two. Divide both sides by negative five. Since a negative divided by a negative is a positive, you're left with a positive x. And on the right hand side, you have a positive divided by a negative, so you're left with a negative two over five. Notice when we divided both sides by negative five, the x became a positive. When we did that, we needed to change the inequality sign from a less than to a greater than. X is greater than negative two fifths. Values for X that would make this inequality true would be any value for X that was greater than negative two fifths. For example, X could equal 30 or X could equal three fifths. Values for X that would make this inequality false would be any values that were not greater than negative two fifths. For example, X could be negative 90 or X could be negative two fifths because negative two fifths is not greater than negative two fifths. D, five X is less than two. Divide both sides by five and you're left with X is less than two fifths. Values for X that would make this inequality true would be any values that were less than two fifths. For example, the value for X could be negative 30 or the value for X could be negative three fifths. Any value would work as long as it was less than two fifths. Values for X that would make this inequality false would be any values for X that were not less than two fifths. For example, if X were 90 or X were two fifths, the inequality would be false because 90 is not less than two fifths and two fifths is not less than two fifths. Problem number two, here is an inequality. Negative three X is greater than 18. A, list some values for X that would make this inequality true. The first step would be to divide both sides by negative three. That would get the X by itself and it would be a positive X. Since the X is now positive, we're gonna have to change the inequality sign from a greater than to a less than. Now you're left with X is less than negative six. You can list any values for X that are less than negative six. Negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, negative 10, any of those values would work. As long as the values were less than negative six. B, how are the solutions to the inequality negative three X is greater than or equal to 18 different from the solutions negative three X is greater than 18? Explain your reasoning. First, let's divide both sides by negative three. That leaves us with X is less than negative six and X is less than or equal to negative six. The difference is X is less than negative six. 
the x can't equal negative 6. Whereas x is less than or equal to negative 6, x can equal negative 6. Problem number 3. Match each sentence with the inequality that could represent the situation. A. Han got $2 from Claire, but still has less than $20. X could represent the amount of money that Han has, so X plus $2 is less than 20. That matches with inequality 3. X plus 2 is less than 20. B. My spent $2 and has less than $20. X could represent the amount of money that my has, and this would be X minus two is less than $20. Sentence B matches inequality one. C, if Tyler had twice the amount of money he has, he would have less than $20. Twice the money he has would be two times X, and two times X would be less than $20, so the inequality would be two X is less than 20. Sentence C matches inequality 2. 2x two is less than 20. And finally, D. If Priya had half the money she has, she would have less than $20. Half the money. That would be one half x. And one half x would be less than $20. Or one half x is less than 20. Inequality 4 matches with sentence D. Problem number four from seventh grade unit four lesson 12. Here are the prices for cheese pizza at a certain pizzeria. A, if you had a coupon that made the price of a large pizza $13, for what percent off was the coupon? The regular price of a large cheese pizza is $16.25. Subtract $13 from that and the coupon saves you $3.25. $3.25 divided by $16.25 equals 2 tenths or 20 hundredths, which is 20%. So the coupon saved 20%. B. Your friend purchased a medium pizza for $10.31 with a 30% off coupon. What is the price of a medium pizza without a coupon? The unknown price of a medium pizza minus the price he paid divided by the unknown price of a medium pizza equals 0 0.30 or the discount he got by using the 30% off coupon. Let's get rid of the divided by x by multiplying both sides by x. Now you're left with x minus 10.31 equals 0 0.30 times x. Subtract x from both sides and you're left with negative 10 and 31 hundredths equals 30 hundredths x minus 1x. We need to find the difference between negative 1x and 30 hundredths x. I could write minus 1x like minus 100 hundredths x. So we have 30 hundredths x minus 100 hundredths x. And that's a difference of negative 70 hundredths x or negative 7 tenths x. We can rewrite the equation as negative 10 and 31 hundredths equals negative 7 tenths x. Divide both sides by negative 7 tenths and you're left with x equals approximately 14 and 73 hundredths. C. Your friend has a 15% off coupon and $10. What is the largest pizza your friend can afford and how much money will be left over after the purchase? Let's take 15% off of the smallest pizza price. That's $11.60. 15% can be rewritten as 0 0.15. So we can write 15 hundredths times 11 and 60 hundredths. That's 1 and 74 hundredths, which means the 15% savings on a pizza that cost $1.60 is $1.74. So $1.60 minus $1.74. That equals $9.86. $10 minus $9.86 equals $0.14. Cents. So the amount of change that they get back would be $0.14, cents, and the largest pizza that the friend could buy would be the small pizza. Problem number five from 7th grade unit six, lesson four. Select all the stories that can be represented by the diagram. The entire diagram has a value of seven, 
It has three x's and a value of one unit. That could be three times x plus one equals seven. Let's look at the first story. A, Andre spends seven hours this week for end of year exams. He spends one hour on English and an equal number of hours on math, science, and history. The one unit in the diagram could represent one hour on English, and the three X's could represent the equal number of hours on math, science, and history. So yes, this diagram represents story A. Let's look at story B. Lynn spends $3 on seven markers and a dollar on a pen. Three times seven plus one, that's a total of 22, not seven. So the diagram doesn't represent story B. Let's look at story C. Diego spends $1 on seven stickers and three marbles. I would disagree because the diagram looks like Diego spent $7 on three marbles and one sticker. Let's look at D. Noah shares seven grapes with three friends. He eats one and gives each friend the same number of grapes. The three X's represent the equal amount given to the three friends and the one unit represents the one grape that he ate. So the diagram matches story D. Let's look at story E. Elena spends seven dollars on three notebooks and a one dollar pen. The three X's in the diagram represent the three notebooks and the one unit in the diagram represents the dollar pen. So the diagram represents story E. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.